Alright, so welcome back guys. Now with today's video, of course, I did a non-commentary version of this. This will be a little bit further on as far as not just covering uh, Geyser Rock and stuff, but I'll probably end up doing a 100% with uh, Sandover Village as well. That way you guys kind of not get too bored of the video. I know the last video was like 15 minutes or so, but for those who have watched some of my other videos, or at least my last video, no, my first one more or less, is the one that I'm actually going to be describing on exactly what this channel is going to be about. Of course, I'm going to be updating my content in 1080p. Uh, the game is actually going to be within true 60 frames per second, and I'm going to be going through and doing a 100% playthrough, and that's is pretty much gathering all Precursor Orbs, Scout Flies, and getting the power cells. Now, there's actually 101 power cells in this whole game, and of course, that's also a trophy to obtain as well. So, how about we go ahead and get started? Now I'm going to do a new game on this one, which I had uh, two two files here. I think I screwed up on the first one that I did. Uh, the one that had to do with commentary, of course, because my Elgato did not introduce, or I forgot to click the automatically reduce game sound. So that kind of overlaid a lot of stuff, which screw, really screwed stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and just redo it, which didn't take too long to do. So my first uh, profile here is actually one that does non-commentary. So the second one here is going to be with commentary. So I hope you guys will enjoy the information I have to tell you and just kind of go through and have a fun time doing this game because this game is definitely one from my childhood and it's one I'm really excited to play and I'm kind of hoping maybe later down the road uh, maybe after Uncharted is finished and even The Last of Us that hopefully Naughty Dog will reconsider and convert back to Jack and Daxter and do it in the cartoonish uh, way. I don't think the realistic version was really all too received well but enough of that. So how about we go ahead and get into this. Um, now during cutscenes and stuff, and even in-game audio, I'm going to try my best not to be talking whenever they speak. So I do apologize if I do kind of do that. But uh, how about we get started? I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy, oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <laughs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. 
But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go, Misty Island. That's right, and then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man, are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! Okay, so now we have made our way onto Geyser Rock. We'll be given a little bit of a tutorial on what the communicator is. It's what, you know, Kira, Samos, you know, use when they come to talk to you. And this is basically just a tutorial level to kind of get you familiar with the controls of the game, kind of give you an idea about what precursor orbs are, and, you know, power cells, uh, scout flies, which are what Kira used to find power cells, but apparently they all got captured and they're now being contained in different styles of boxes and stuff, so you'll be able to kind of distinguish them from basic crates and stuff. But uh, how about we go ahead and get started and see what this is all about. This device is a communicator. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Okay, you can't go back through the warp gate. Samos will pretty much tell you that there. So you got to go ahead and get all four of the power cells that are on you this can't level come here. Back through the warp gate until you find all four power cells on this island. So yeah, that's pretty much a no-go. So the first things we come into contact with are chests. Chests can be easily broken by either punching them or spin kicking them. Doesn't matter which. Which they actually contain green eco, which is pretty much the essence of life or health in this game. Now in the upper left hand corner you notice you have three, three gauges of health. So you get hit three times, you die. But if you gather 50, uh, the number indicator that's on to the right side of that, if you gather 50 of those, what that does is if you end up getting hit, it'll immediately use the 50 that you have gathered up 
and that'll replenish any health that you lost. So here's the introduction to power cell, not power cells, but precursor orbs here. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. Now, of course, like Kira stated before, these things are used as far as the collection goes to kind of greed in, you know, some people who ask for these. So most of the case, I think you'll come into contact with a lot of the villagers or anybody else within the game that will ask about 90 of those. That's the generalized uh, amount that they ask for. Now, maybe when you come into contact with oracles and stuff like that, or the oracle statues, I think they ask for like 120. So, yeah. You gotta basically go through and collect these in order to obtain other power cells throughout the game. Basic fundamentals of taking out these wooden statue things of any sorts. Just kind of get yourself familiar with the game's mechanics. This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A grab zoomer. So now we have the introduction of power cells, which is weird because they're not really introduced in many of the other games besides Jack X. Apparently these things are very important, and they're very important as far as the precursor technology goes. So I don't know why they don't really make much of an appearance in other games. I don't know why. Maybe Naughty Dog forgot about it. So these crates here are what the scout flies are contained in, so you can't punch them normally. So you actually got to do a dive in order to break the crate. And Samos will pretty much tell you that right here. Sometimes you'll want to hit things with a greater force. To break one of these boxes, you should jump in the air and then dive down onto it, hands first. Hey, you found one of my scout flies. I sent seven of them to each area to look for power cells, but the lurkers must have captured them all. All right, so we were informed that there are seven in total in each area. So just keep your eyes peeled for boxes like these. And once you've collected all seven, the last one will have a power cell. So just more to add to your collection there. And these are not really hard to find. They're e pretty easy to distinguish out in the open. So you just sometimes have to look a little harder than usual in some areas. Not all will have them right there in front of you. There we go. Another power cell. Second one so far. Daxter doing his little crazy dances going on. Wow! That last scout fly had a power cell! I'll bet if you collect all seven in each area, you can find even more power cells. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of Moser. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. <laughs> So we now were introduced to Blue Eco, which is the Eco, or more or less, some, it helps with motion of sorts. And it also acts as a magnetic of some degree. Uh, precursor orbs will be brought to you, chests and stuff will also be brought to you, and even scout flies. So if you ever come into contact of any of these, they're very nice to help get you around really quick because they also help you run faster. So by any means, once you come into contact with stuff like this, they're, it's very useful as far as getting around. Now they're also used to help open up any kind of old ancient technology from the precursor era, which is also nice because you will need these in order to find power cells or to progress some sections of the game. So definitely if you see something like that, yeah, don't forget to uh, obtain that. So what, I, what you see right here, this is what I'm talking about. So that little lightning symbol in there, you'll need to uh, go ahead and activate or obtain blue eco of any means. So you'll end up actually having vents like shown over there in the distance that I'll get to here in a second. That's what's used to actually power these on. So once you come into close proximity of it, it'll actually open up for you. So, uh. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. Basically, I'm just telling you pretty much that Samos is going to tell you what Kira tells you, so. That's a blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. All 
Alright. So just go ahead and run your way towards here and it'll open up for you. There you go. Now you have your third power cell. This tutorial level is actually pretty straightforward, nothing too complex. Good work! The Blue Eco caused the door to open. With Blue Eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have made dormant for years. Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos, or one big green one, to increase your health. So, the one thing I wanted to inform you is, uh, I think I may have, sometimes my brain doesn't really function all that well. There's 50 precursor orbs in each area, and so, what this whole playthrough, or these playthroughs are going to consist of, I'm going to be doing videos that have to do with non-commentary and ones that have to do with commentary. I'll be doing things that deal with, you know, theories and stuff, uh, gameplay, glitches definitely, and just other like, because Jack and Dexter is a game that actually has a lot of glitching that is in their games. To some degree, especially Jack 2 and Jack 3. But we'll touch more on those when they come out. So and now we have the introduction of double jumping. You can jump once, then jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. So now we have obtained 50 of the precursor orbs, which are again in each area that you come across. It's not really hard to figure that out. All you gotta do, if you're ever curious on how many are in each level, just go into your menu and it'll automatically pop up the area. It'll show you how many power cells you have collected, which are obviously highlighted, and ones that have not been found yet. Uh, hit X, you know, for the precursor orb, so it tells you how many are in each area, and even the scout flies. So, collect all those, you'll get yourself some lovely trophies later on, and that's pretty much it is to it. I really enjoy this game simply because of its cal uh, color palette, uh, how friendly it is as far as for adults or kids go. But uh, there's definitely, like, in some degree, some essence that uh, seems to be kind of more adult-oriented to some degree. But, I don't know, it depends on what you mean by that. Uh, one good method I want to, uh, as far as a tip goes, for those who are kind of curious, jumping off a high heights and then coming down to the ground below, you can easily avoid fall damage as soon as, before you hit, hit the uh, spin attack button, which will then give you the option to help reduce yourself from getting any forms of damage. Alright, so now we can go back to Samos' hut, activate the warp gate there, hit a uh, circle there, and as far as we have, we only have uh, Samos' hut we can go to. Later on down the road, we can use the other ones such as the Red Sage, the Blue Sage, which then can make traversing the, the map area much, much more fluently instead of walking back and forth and taking so much time to get from point A to point B. And there we go. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! All right, so now we are back. Uh, very nice reference there from Crash Bandicoot, the piranha plant. Uh, you can't really do anything to it. You can't kill it, but it's nice that it's there. They kind of reference their older games. And now we have a view of Sandover Village. It's a very small little area, nothing too big. And of course, we can see out in the distance, you have the forbidden jungle with its temple architecture just floating about. So before I even continue, how about we go ahead and see what Kira is up to? Hey, baby! What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-grab zoomer? Rule number one, I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. 
Listen, if you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I trace part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. I thought it was actually kind of funny when Daxter mentioned to Kira that, you know, she doesn't know what she's missing out on. And he's sitting there juggling his hands, which I thought was a reference to, you know, something very uh, sexual in some degree. Juggling the breasts. <laughs> but, I don't know, sometimes Naughty Dog has that tendency to really add in those kind of uh, hidden things if you don't really catch on too easily. Uh, now we have the lovely boat here that was actually taken out by a... Well, at least a big chunk of it was taken out by a lurker shark. Now, those things are very, very dangerous, so make sure you don't swim out too far in the water. Did you see the size of the bite that lurker shark took out of the fisherman's boat? We best stay way clear of them. I don't think we can tackle a creature that dag nasty. And there is actually one way to figure out if you do end up... Uh, going out too far. I'll show you, but I may die in the process, which uh, I really don't mind. But the point being is, if you swim out too far, you'll be introduced to a, uh, a noise. It'll sound like a gruntly growling noise, and then the, you'll hear the sound of a heartbeat. So, and that's an indication to show you that one, you're too far out. And second of all, you'll see the lurker shark come out about pretty much, oh, right there he is. So, you definitely want to avoid that big fluffy guy right there because if you go too far out he'll greet you with some lovely uh, stomach ah. yeah <laughs> I could have easily avoided that but point being is that's exactly what happens there so don't swim out too far you'll end up be greeting to the stomach of a lurker shark but anyway time to uh, head into Sandover village and see what the villagers are up to now you may not be able to have access and get everything so far at the beginning. Um, in some cases, they'll have you go around to other areas to complete what they have as far as their tasks go. So don't be don't fret if you don't end up getting all the power cells in this area or you don't get all the precursor orbs. Precursor orbs are not really of any issue because they are mostly stationary in their location. So the only thing that you might have to be worried about is the power cells. The power cells are what... You know, you may have to traverse to another area in order to get them later on. Hey! It looks like scout flies are all. So we got one scout fly. I went to uh, Sentinel Beach there and I got one there. But the game will pretty much show you if you kind of go too far out and you go into another area. And if you obtain a scout fly or a precursor orb or such, they'll, they'll keep record of it there. So we got one. There's two. Really weird graphical issue there that I saw before I picked it up. I should have just stared at it and see what would have happened if I... What it looked like. Alright, so you got him. Apparently... He likes to refer to himself as, I guess, Jack's uncle. Alright, so you got the mayor. There it is. There's the graphical thing. Oh, it's not too bad. Oh, no. I thought they were mostly black, not gray. Oh, no, they're gray. Never mind. Alright, so you got Jack's uncle, you have the mayor, you'll have a fish weird-like lady, which is uh, definitely weird. And then you'll have another guy whose inspiration is taken away because of his muse, which is an animal cat-like creature that he needs to finish up what he needs to do. And there he is there. So, in total, you'll have one, two, three, I think, uh, how many? Six in total? Okay. Yeah, so these are not too hard to, to get. Of course, you got 50 precursor orbs, 7 scout flies, which I got 4 of 7, which again are not that hard to find. You just gotta traverse the area. So let's go ahead and get the precursor orbs out of the way, and also get the scout flies. Another one there. Two more to go, which I think are really close to me. I don't remember yet. 
cursor orbs, which I'll get to here in a moment. Now, one thing is, I did notice this before a while back, um, now that it has returned to my brain, that the all the 50 precursor orbs within Sandover Village might be a little hard to find. And what I mean by that is you'll end up probably coming across and you will obtain, I'd say, about maybe... But I think maybe about 44 or so. There we go, got another power cell. So there's all your scout flies. But as far as the precursor orbs go, that was an issue that I had a long time ago that I found that I wasn't really finding them all. And I wasn't really sure why. Was I doing something wrong? Did I not find a, uh, a platform that could have activated to give me more precursor orbs? Or what was the ordeal? I don't really remember. So... After replaying this game, I kind of found out what the issue was, and as you can see, as far as the precursor orbs go, I already got 30, which ain't too bad. Uh, there's definitely more close by. We got some up there towards Fire Cavern, or Fire Canyon, I mean. Go ahead and grab those. <laughs> Alright, so I got all them there. You just gotta look, but this one really uh, threw me off for a loop after a long time of trying to find them. But uh, the ones that are all in Sandover Village, as far as the precursor orbs go, there's actually some in the Forbidden Jungle. So now I have a total of 94, and I, guess I just gotta find six more. I couldn't find them before. That was a, a pain for me. For some reason, I could never find them. But they're actually located over here, which is not exactly in Sandover Village, but here they are. So now that you've got all 50 precursor orbs there, you don't have to worry about them anymore. Scout flies have been captured. Precursor orbs have been found. Now all that's left is a few power cells, which are very simple to get to. One, you'll have this old man, which will have you take the cattle and put them back into, you know, the little cage. Which you can skip this first beginning cutscene if you just want to go ahead and knock them all in there. They're not that hard to get into it. But, uh, let's just see what's up. Mm -hmm. Gotta milk those yak cows. Gotta milk those yak cows. Oh, it's you. Oh, just resting my tired bones. I've been trying to get those hungry yak cows back into the pen all day. Some strange creatures tried to steal them earlier. You think you could help an old man try to get him back into the corral? Alright, so we just gotta get the cattle back into where they need to go. You can hit them, which will initiate them to run. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work. There's one. I think there's a total of five so far. Makes for number You can always steer them in the direction that you need them to go. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. Come on, Mr. Cow, keep going. There you go. The farmer owes us a power cell. Let's go talk to him. Then gotta bring in the crops from the jewel. Ah, oh, well done, my boy. You actually got those flea bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power cell for your trouble. Alright. That wasn't too bad, actually. See what everybody else is up to. What the heck happened there? Oh my! 
Fine. What a horribly sick little bird. <laughs> you don't look so good yourself, lady. Oh, sorry. I thought you were a spotted orange bellied ring freak. You know, yesterday I saw some terribly vicious creatures capture a mother flut flut near the beach. Now there's this poor little orphan egg sitting in a nest at the top of the cliff, and I can't get to it. If you could climb up there and push it off, I've piled some hay down at the base to catch it safely. Do an old lady a favor, and I'll give you a power cell. Okay, good. So, go save a bird, get a precursor, not a precursor, but a power cell, which is in another section. Let's see what Uncle Old Man needs. Well, uh, hello there, my dear boy. You've caught me at a most inopportune moment. Uh, I wish to set off on my journey yesterday, but I seem to be a spot short on the old precursor orbs. I would have pledged my word that I had 90 of them, but I gather that your young friend, you know, the little annoying, miserably ugly one, <coughs> might have just pilfered them as a sort of a spot of fun. Anyway, uh, would you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway? I would offer you a power cell in return. Alright, so trade 90 precursor orbs for a power cell. Not yet. Let's see what Mr. Mayor Man has to say about all this. Oh, don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boy. See them? See how they're not moving? That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. And boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, and, and another thing, if by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is, a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. All right, so we got two options here. We can give him 90 precursor orbs for a power cell, and we got to go to the Forbidden Jungle to turn back on the town's power. So, just got to collect them, you know, them precursor orbs, man. It's a lot of tedious work, but uh, that's the only way to get your, uh, your stuff going. Hey, little furry dude. Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. Your what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. But with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute. We are not going back to Misty Island. Are we? All right, so Mr. Crazy Surfer Man dude has stated that his muse have went over to Misty Island, so we got to go over there and capture that. It's like a cat-like creature, of course, which, again... It's not that hard if you want to get the power cell from him. So in total, we have four that we do not got. And of course, there's actually one area that I did not go to. And that is the Oracle. Oops. And the biggest concern with him is, yeah, everybody else requires 90. He's 120. Yeah, so you got to go ahead and for each power cell that he has, you have to have 120 freaking precursors. That's crazy, right? This must. Who awakens the Oracle? Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched. 
watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. Alright, so there you have it. With those there, again, gonna have a fun time trying to collect all those precursor orbs. So that about does it for this video, guys. I know I did Geyser Rock 100%, but as far as for Sandover Village, not exactly. Um, but in due time, I will get those. So hopefully you guys will stay tuned and watch what I have to show. Just kind of give you some basic rundown on what goes on and what I will be doing. So I hope you guys will stay tuned and I will catch you guys on the next video. Let me go ahead and just get rid of 90 of my precursor orbs here for this guy. Hey, you have the uh, precursor orbs that we agreed on? I hope you put this hard-earned power cell to good use. Cheerio, ta-ta, bye-bye. There we go. Yeah, I do apologize that I was talking through that uh, little commotion that they were discussing. My fault. I just actually was not even paying attention to that. So we got seven in total, and that's where I'm going to be stopping here. So nothing else to really show until further on. Uh, and I'll be back for more, so I'll catch you guys later. Until next time.